If you're wondering why I've got a second chair next to me, it's not for Josh, it's for my little dog. Because he loves to lay with me while I'm filming. He's falling asleep there. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, so this video today is going to be um, about each of my miscarriages. So I'm really sorry if it goes on for a long time, but I feel like I've, there's probably quite a lot to talk about. And also, I just want to say that I made a mistake in my last video, so I've actually written down the dates because I don't want to get anything wrong again. I actually felt awful when I realised that I said the wrong date. But there's so many dates to remember. So anyway, I've written them all down anyway. Um, and before I start, I did want to say, um, obviously, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you've experienced a miscarriage or maybe you're going through one now. And I just want to say how sorry I am that you're going through it. Um, it's really hard and it's such an emotional roller coaster. Just know that you're not alone and there's so much support out there. I just hope that um, maybe my videos might help. I don't know how, but um, like I said in my last video, I just spent hours on YouTube watching other people's stories and it just made me feel, I don't know. I just found it helped because I didn't feel so alone and even though I didn't know these people and they don't know me, I felt better watching them because um, other people are going through it and they know exactly how you feel. Also, um, another thing that I, I have never forgotten since I heard someone say it. It was probably on a YouTube video as well, but um, they said, even though you haven't got your baby in your arms, you're still a mum. And I like to think that all the time. I've had four pregnancies, and I, even though I'm not religious, I like to say I've got four angel babies, and that makes me a mum still. So don't ever forget that. So if I keep looking down at my phone, it's because I'm looking at my dates that I've written down. So I don't want to get them wrong. I don't know if that's bad that I've had to write them down. In the last video I said that um, we found out we were pregnant in March and it took five months to get pregnant but I got pregnant in April and it took six months to get pregnant. So I found out I was pregnant on the 12th of April and it was literally the best thing ever. I mean it I felt like it was such a long journey to get there even though it was only six months and um, for me that felt like such a long time because I just thought getting pregnant was such an easy simple thing um yeah so uh every month trying to get pregnant every time I got my period <clears throat> I was just so upset and so disappointed and it just knocked me back every time and I just thought oh I'm just not going to get pregnant and then yeah on the 12th of April when we found out we were pregnant it was the best thing ever and I burst into tears Josh got upset and um straight away you think, oh, you we're pregnant, everything's going to be fine, we're going to have a baby in nine months. So we um, thought about all these really cool ways we could surprise. We only wanted to tell, like, our close immediate family, so Josh's mum, my mum, my sister. And it actually happened to be a day before my sister's birthday. And she was in America at the time. Um, I did FaceTime her. But she couldn't hear me at all, so and I'm sort of glad she couldn't because I managed to surprise her when she got home. But yeah, so we went um, to the supermarkets and brought um, all these things to surprise our family. So I want to show you actually because I've got stuff behind me. This is my little memory box that I'm going to have to get a bigger one because I can't actually fit everything in it now. So we bought this to surprise Josh's mum it says born in 2019 um, we put that in a little box and yeah Josh's mum got emotional about it and then for my mum um, I waited for her to get home from work um, me and Josh sat in the car waiting outside for her reaction so I put um, Josh's shoes my shoes and then these little shoes um, outside the front door so when she came up the path she saw them all and she instantly knew because she had a feeling anyway because she knew we were trying and and then when my sister got back from America I'd had this made to show her she just started crying straight away because it's such because everyone knows how much we've wanted um a baby so when they found out it was emotional for them as well because they knew how much it meant to us 
and then um then obviously when you find out you're pregnant you get you download all those apps like tells you how big your baby is and everything you should be experiencing at that time and everything like that and it just makes it all like so much more fun so the pregnancy didn't last long at all um so i should probably say before i um continue but all um our pregnancies we've never actually got to see a heartbeat it's only um been a pregnancy sack and a yolk sack but each time i've been pregnant my body's carried on until i'm supposed to be nine weeks pregnant but i've only actually got to like the five week sort of mark um yeah so we miscarried our first baby on the 10th of may and it was the most horrible thing ever because um i actually started miscarrying at work i had a horrible pain in the morning in my on one side on my left side it was i felt like i had to sit down it was just horrible um i didn't really think much of it um because I've typed in online and it says like oh the uterus grow and everything like this and I just I just carried on I st miscarriage still didn't cross my mind at that point and then um, later on in the day while I was still at work I started bleeding so I phoned my mum my mum did work in the antenatal unit in the hospital so yeah and then she put me on the phone to a midwife and the midwife was talking me through it and saying that it could be um, implantation bleeding or old blood or whatever like that and then um, so obviously I'm still panicking in my mind but on the other hand I'm thinking it could be everything could be okay so I went home and I waited for the following morning to have a scan and then that's when I got in and then the sonographer said that there was nothing there and that's just the worst thing um sorry It's just so horrible when you when it's all you ever want and everything's just taken away from you oh sorry about that I didn't expect that to happen yeah so that was our first miscarriage and then obviously you get told all the time one in four women go through miscarriage and it's probably just a one-off and everything's going to be fine try, you can try again straight away yeah so that's what we did we tried again as soon as we could and um we found out we were pregnant again on the 1st of september we didn't want to get our hopes up but we were also excited because we thought oh we've had we've had a miscarriage now the chances of us having another one is very slim so we thought um and then I didn't do the pregnancy app or anything like that. I just decided to just see how it went. And then we miscarried again on the 2nd of October. Each time I've had a miscarriage, I go to have a scan. They tell me that there's just a pregnancy sack and a yolk sack or whatever. And then I'm told to wait 7 to 10 days and then go back again. And that length of time is horrible to have to wait to not know if you're pregnant or not you can't relax as much as people tell you to stay positive you can't so you just have to sit and wait to then be let down again and told that you definitely are gonna miscarry yeah that wasn't fun so we were very lucky with our third pregnancy um, we saw a fertility specialist so we had an appointment to see the fertility specialist already booked and then we found out we were pregnant so when we were at the appointment we were literally like three weeks pregnant so she put me on aspirin and progesterone. After we were given that, I thought, oh, everything's gonna be fine now. Um, Cause basically I was given aspirin because when I was younger, I used to suffer like horrendous nosebleeds and I used to have huge, horrible clots in, like come up my nose. Sorry if that's too much information, but um, yeah. So cause I mentioned that, she said that it could be that there's not enough blood flow circulating. So yeah, um, I was given aspirin and progesterone and I thought everything's gonna be fine now. That's probably what it was that caused the two miscarriages. So I started to feel a lot more positive about this pregnancy and I think Josh did too. Yes, yeah, so we found out we were pregnant on the 7th of December and then we had an appointment on the 11th of December. That's when we were prescribed the aspirin and progesterone and then a week later I had a scan just to make sure everything was going okay. And then we got the same old news, um, just a pregnancy sack and a yolk sack. And I just literally thought, 
we're just obviously never going to have a baby. I, th I got, I think I got to the point where I just didn't cry anymore. I, th I think I just ran out of tears. Um, and I could, I sort of saw it coming in the back of my mind. I thought it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Yeah. So that was on the 18th of December and then where we had the scan and everything we discussed having um, surgical management so I was booked in for that on the 31st of December um, and I was absolutely terrified I've never even had um, general anaesthetic before I think that's what scared me the most the whole process was just horrible I would never want to go through that again and as soon as I woke up I just burst into tears I just thought everything's over and yeah, it's horrible. After I had the surgery, I was told, um, because it was such an early pregnancy, um, I should heal pretty quickly and I can we can start trying again after my first period. We were so determined to have a baby, because that's what we've wanted for so long. I didn't want to give up, so as soon as I had my first period, we tried again. Uh, that's when we uh, fell pregnant this last time. I didn't actually do any um, pregnancy tests or anything because I had a feeling I was pregnant anyway. I mean, every single time I've been pregnant, I've had exactly the same symptoms and I just, when it got to the third pregnancy, I just knew I was pregnant then. And then the same with the fourth, I knew. Um, I didn't actually see the point in doing a pregnancy test. And also, I, I don't know if I wanted to know because I didn't want to get my hopes up and the disappointment and everything like that again. So I just left it but we had an appointment um at the hospital to see the fertility specialist again on the 27th of february um so when i went in they said is there a chance you're pregnant and i said there is a chance that we're pregnant again so we did a pregnancy test at the hospital and it was so weird not being the first person to find out um if i'm pregnant or not i don't know how i felt really when i when i was told i wasn't excited and it shouldn't be like that I was scared so yeah we went through to our appointment and straight away she uh, prescribed me with the uh, pre-filled syringes I don't actually know what they're called um I want to say I don't know how to pronounce it but I think it's anoxaparin or something anoxaparin and it's an anticoagulant medication pre-filled syringe um you inject one every day we had that with the aspirin I was taking Pregnicare anyway I had more blood tests done at that appointment also um, to test my thyroid and things like that. So yeah, we also um, we also still had the progesterone as well. So we had quite a few things to try. And then a couple of weeks into trying um, those new medications, I got a letter through the door saying that I had a vitamin D um, insufficiency. So yeah, I thought if we've gone through all those emotions and that hurt and all those losses, just to find out that I need vitamin D tablets, I was a bit angry. I was a bit upset. But then I also thought we might have finally found the solution to take vitamin D tablets and then the pregnancy would go fine. So I went straight to the pharmacy to take to, uh, to buy some. In the end, I was prescribed the right ones. And on our next appointment, which was our scan, I was told that the vitamin D insufficiency wasn't low enough to do any harm to the pregnancy. So... My emotions were just all over the place. Um, so I was offered an early a early scan when I was supposed to be like six weeks pregnant, but I didn't want that because I, in my mind I thought, I'm just going to turn up to the scan, it's going to be exactly the same news, it's going to be an empty sack, and I'm going to have to wait another ten days and go back again. And I didn't, I absolutely hate that waiting period. So I thought I'll, um, I'll wait a couple more weeks to have a scan because... If I'm going to miscarry, it will. I'll miscarry within that time frame anyway. And an extra two weeks would mean I'm supposed to be eight weeks pregnant. And at that time, there would definitely be a heartbeat. So I thought I'd rather wait and still feel like I'm pregnant and be hopeful that everything's going to be okay than go in early and then have to wait that horrible time where I don't know if I'm pregnant or not, if that makes sense. So our scan was on the 23rd of March and it was the same news again fourth time I just decided to go home wait for everything to happen naturally 
and then just go from there. So our miscarriage started on the 27th of March and then I stopped bleeding on the 4th of April. I feel like I've coped a lot better this time because um, normally when I have a miscarriage, Josh is still working, so he'll stay with me for the first couple of days and then he has to go back to work, so then I'm on my own. I mean, I've got family anyway, but when you're on your own the majority of the time, you, your mind is just constantly thinking about these things and not going to be a mum and why am I having so many miscarriages and it's just been completely different this time because with this whole isolation thing, Josh has been at home with me the whole time. My mind has been thinking about it every single day and I have still been crying almost every single day. But Josh has been there with me through every step of the way, supporting me, and I'm there supporting him as well because it's him going through it too. So in that sense, having Josh with me all the time has helped me a lot more. But I haven't seen my mum in so long and that's been so hard. Here I go again. Normally I see my mum like three times a week and it's been so hard not to just give her a hug. But hopefully this won't go on for much longer and then I'll get to see my mum. But yeah, we've been told now um, to not try again for a good few months. Um, so we're going to hold off from trying again for a while. I don't know if it's going to make any difference, but it will definitely help us emotionally, I think, because it's been such a difficult 11 months to have four losses and still have no baby at the end of it. It's not nice. I've, Me and Josh have always said we wanted to have our family complete by the time I'm 30, and that's just looking like an impossibility at the moment. But it'll be great if you could follow us on our journey, and thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please give it a like if you enjoyed it. Well, I don't know if you can really enjoy a video like this, but like it if you can relate to it. Yeah. Um, Subscribe to the channel as well so you can see more of our videos and feel free to use the comment section if you've got any questions or if you've got any ideas of what I can do for my next video. Yeah, that's it really. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!